let's talk about the announcement that Joe Biden just made as I was, you know, doing research for today's stream that he is running for president of the United States. <gasps> shocker. It's not really a shocker. We all knew that Joe Biden was most likely going to run for president again unless the dude just killed over and died or, you know, he got deeply sick and then Kamala Harris might take his place. Maybe Pete Buttigieg would throw his hat into the ring. We do know that there's other people running for president like Marion Williamson and Kennedy. Um, uh, 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 Robert Kennedy, not... I think it's Robert Kennedy. I'm sorry, there's so many Kennedys. The Kennedy family's so big and he doesn't have a chance of winning any anyway. I believe it's Robert Kennedy. And they're running for president, but they're not gonna even be on the debate stage with Joe Biden. The Democrats have announced they're not gonna be doing debates, which personally, I don't really like. I think that if you're going to put forward a nominee, it should be less of a coronation and still should be a nomination process. Most likely Joe Biden would still end up being the nominee anyway. I understand the logic of not wanting to go in with a weaker candidate because you know, Robert Kennedy and Marianne, Marianne Williamson would be aggressive against Joe Biden. But the president of the United States should be able to deal with criticism. The president of the United States should be able to fare pretty well in the debate. The president of the United States should be able to uh, deal with all challengers and all comers who want to, you know, go after their agenda or go after uh, their positions. Uh, I had the, But the, this is also uh, something that the Republicans do as well. In 2020, Donald Trump did not have a, a you know a primary debate even though people like joe welsh who's a republican did end up actually running against him that election so this is something both parties do that i that i personally don't like but as as we all see joe biden has announced he's running for president and this is seems to be the first ad of his re-election campaign uh here's the tweet he put out with it every generation has a moment where they have to stand up for democracy to stand up for their fundamental freedoms i believe this is ours that's why i'm running for re-election as president of the united states join us let's finish the job freedom that's it and add freedom sorry okay continue personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as americans there's nothing more important nothing more sacred that's been the work of my first term to fight for our democracy this shouldn't be a red revolution to protect our rights to make sure that everyone in this country is treated equally and that everyone is given a fair shot at making it but you know, around the country, MAGA extremists are lining up to take on those bedrock freedoms. Cutting Social Security that you paid for your entire life while cutting taxes for the very wealthy. Dictating what health care decisions women can make. Banning books and telling people who they can love. All while making it more difficult for you. Okay, I think it's smart to run on the democracy thing. A lot of people thought that running on democracy, running on making it easier to vote, running on you know, stopping people from going after our democratic institutions as many people were you know act, uh, reacting to the 2020 election with you know the system's rigged we need to take out we need to take over all of the secretary of state positions in the country with election deniers we need to you know we need to fix the quote unquote fix the system running on democracy a lot of people thought it wouldn't be a smart message but it really motivated democrats especially young democrats to get out and vote and it may and it made it so that the democrats had a much better than expected results during the midterm so i don't think that's a bad message to run on i think it's a good message to run on to uh, rejuvenate the base also running on abortion i think needs to be a, a, a real key tenet of his campaign as we see states like oklahoma putting basically almost banning abortions outside of like rape and incest before six weeks which is crazy to think about considering i think most people don't even know or at least a lot of people don't even know they're pregnant at the six week mark so uh, we have these restrictions going on across the country after Roe versus Wade got overturned. And that was also a big motivator for Democrats during the midterm. Um, that was a big motivator for independents to vote for Democrats during the midterm. I think it's smart to run in in 2024, especially if he's going to be going against somebody like Donald Trump, who is going to have to keep the evangelical base around him. And we've been getting reports from Donald Trump. Well, not from Donald Trump, but from reporters in the, who have doing investigation into the Trump camp from him basically low-key panicking low-key getting super super worried about how the evangelicals are trying to hold him to get even more stringent and more stringent on abortion when he knows even donald trump knows it's a losing issue and so if he has to run on a losing issue then joe biden should push him on that i think it's smart to run on for you to be able to vote
When I ran for president four years ago, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America, and we still are. The question we're facing is whether in the years ahead, we have more freedom or less freedom, more rights or fewer. I know what I want the answer to be, and I think you do too. This is not a time to be complacent. That's why I'm running for re-election. Because I know America. I know we're good and decent people. I know we're still a country that believes in honesty, respect, and treating each other with dignity. That we're a nation where we give hate no safe harbor. We believe that everyone is equal, that everyone should be given a fair shot to succeed in this country. Thank you for choosing Thank us. You. Every generation of Americans has faced a moment when they have to defend democracy. Stand up for our personal freedom. Stand up for the right to vote and our civil rights. And this is our moment. It's cheesy. You get the idea, right? He, he continues yada 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 it's that's basically it you you get the you get the main idea behind the ad joe biden is running for president again in 2024 putting all doubts aside about whether he would or would not run it's official now we all kind of knew he was going to run but now we know it for sure and i gotta say honestly even though joe biden's polling numbers are not fantastic right now we're talking about like you know, while Rasmussen, for whatever reason, even though it's a right-wing pollster, keeps having him at like 46, 48, a lot of the pollsters seem to have him near like 42, 40, some even into the into the high 30s. We're talking 38, 39. His polling numbers are not great right now. If you look at the RCP average, I think it's like low 40s. So his polling numbers are not great, but the polling numbers of his opponents are not faring much better either. While Ron DeSantis does seem to pull better against uh, against Joe Biden, and he would probably be a more cha challenging candidate for Joe Biden, Ron DeSantis is looking like he's in a worse and worse position as of late, with the most recent polling coming out seeming to have Donald Trump above him by a margin of 37 points. And that's right, 37 points. Look at this. This is insane. 37 points. And this is something that DeSantis, the DeSantis team, and reporters are taking note of. DeSantis was recently confronted about his falling polling numbers, as he is still yet to announce that he's running for president, if he is going to run for president, while he was visiting Japan. Why was the governor of Florida visiting Japan? I don't know. Maybe he likes sushi. Who knows? Uh, a lot of governors actually do foreign trips. It's not that crazy. Uh, a lot of governors actually have basically ambassadors to other countries and, and like a, a somebody who does foreign policy for them. Uh, but he was asked during uh, his trip there by a CNN reporter uh, whether or not uh, he's taking note of the fact that his polling numbers are falling behind Trump. Any thoughts on that? And this was his response. Governor, a poll show you falling behind uh, a Trump. Any thoughts on that? Gosh, I'm not I'm not a candidate, so we'll see if uh, if and when that changes. <laughs> OK, so that's not a great response. Um, it didn't it didn't not number one. It didn't come off well, but also that's not a great explanation because everybody knows that his name is being floated to run for president. Uh, but he does have a little bit of a shed of truth there. I do want to do a tiny bit of defense for Ron DeSantis here, just a tiny bit, because nobody else will, because everybody's been clowning on him for this uh, for this clip. Uh, when Joe Biden did not announce he was running for president, Bernie Sanders was like the leading uh, uh, candidate in the Democratic primary. When, jo when Joe Biden announced, his poll numbers skyrocketed. Now that's Joe Biden. That's the former vice president of the United States. Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida. This is obviously a very different dynamic, and I don't think it's going to have the same effect since, you know, we're going from Obama presidency to Joe Biden presidency after Joe Biden being his VP. Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida who is uh, who became governor of Florida in large part due to a Trump endorsement during his 2018 campaign against Andrew Gilliam, who he just barely, barely beat before Andrew Gilliam kind of crashed his political campaign into a mount, his political career into a mountainside after getting caught with hookers and drugs, gay hookers too, and drugs, which makes them cooler. Anyway, I think it's squaring up to be Donald Trump versus Joe Biden 
in the 2024 election. If I was Ron DeSantis, I do not know if I would have the balls to go against Donald Trump in this race. The polling numbers are getting worse and worse and worse for him. And the longer he puts off announcing that he's going to run for president, the worse the polling number is going to get as Donald Trump's campaign makes stop after stop after stop in countries uh, in states across the country. As he makes speeches after in, in speeches, he plugs ads. He's, you know, sending out his goons to try to rally the troops. He's getting endorsements. It's looking clearer and clearer like Donald Trump is going to be the nominee for president unless Ron DeSantis announces in the near, and I do mean very near future. It seems with, with statements like this that he's still somewhat considering it or, or it's still in the ballpark since he's saying I haven't announced yet, which suggests that he could announce. But if he doesn't announce in the near future, that polling situation is only going to get worse for him. Donald Trump's only going to continue the momentum that's launching him to become president of, uh, not president of the United States, but the nominee for president of the United States for the Republicans. And if I'm being honest, Donald Trump is just more liked among the Republican base than Ron DeSantis. I do not think in a head-to-head -head matchup, Ron DeSantis would come out on top. I could be wrong. I am not a fortune teller. I'm not going to be like all those clowns who are like, I know for sure that Russia is not going to invade Ukraine only to get smacked in the face. I'm not going to be that guy. But we have seen Donald Trump knocked down candidate after candidate after candidate in the 2016 election. Nobody thought he was going to be the nominee. Everybody doubted him, me included. I mean, I was not an adult at the time. So, I mean, what was, what was I like? I was like 15, 16, but nobody thought he was going to be nominee. And he knocked down Ben Carson. He knocked down Ted Cruz. He knocked down Rand Paul. He knocked down uh, Fiorina. He knocked down uh, Chris Christie. He knocked down so debate. many Ridiculous. people. Uh, Granddad's Lounge. Thank you so much for the rate of four. I appreciate it, buddy. He knocked down so many people. And some people seem to think that Ron DeSantis won't fall in the same way. But I have no reason to believe that wouldn't be the case, considering we've done this test like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times already, and each time Donald Trump comes out on top. We've seen Ron DeSantis and how he deals with these attacks from Donald Trump, and his main way of dealing with it seems to be, um, I'm going to concentrate on the great stuff I'm doing here in Florida, uh, and Donald Trump can do Donald Trump, which is an okay response if he's not going to run for president. But if he's running for president, he's going to have to respond to criticism. He's going to have to respond to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has shown that he is willing to go low. I mean, really low. He has suggested that Ron DeSantis had inappropriate relationships with his children when he was a teacher, not, well, not with his children, with his students when he was a teacher, underage high school te uh, students, mind you. Not college students, high school students. That's a crazy insinuation to make about somebody, and it seems like it's a warning that Donald Trump will drag Ron DeSantis into the mud if need be. If need be, he will do it. And I don't know if Ron DeSantis really wants to be dragged through the mud in that way. I really, really, really do not know if he wants to. I mean, there have been people who have been ruined by Donald Trump's attacks. Others have seemed to have recovered somewhat after they, you know, bend the knee and kiss the ring, like Ted Cruz, for example. But does he really want to go through that thrashing? Burns is an immoral, Considering that Donald Trump has made very clear man. how hard he's going to go? I don't know about that. I don't know about that, guys. Joe Biden's announced. R Donald Trump's announced. Ron DeSantis is kind of sitting on the sidelines considering if he wants to get thrashed or not looking to be a crazy 2024 and if i if you want to put a gun to my has, head and ask joe biden versus donald trump 2024 i think joe biden's got the advantage outside of a uh, an, an extremely horrific economic crisis or something like that stuff can always happen between now and election day and i want you guys to remember that nobody could have known covid was coming around in the lead up to the 2020 election something like that could happen again and it could ruin joe biden's presidency to a point where he can't stand up against any opponent so i'm not going to say confidently joe biden will be the next president of the united states but if it's joe biden versus donald trump donald trump's polling numbers have not increased they have not recovered from the 2020 disaster that was January 6th and his less than favorable exit from office and him having all the legal trouble, four separate cases, one to do with rape, a uh, rape allegation, one to do with him calling the secretary of state of Georgia, trying to intimidate them to fix the election. 
Uh, one to deal with, of course, the Alvin Bragg case, his case with when it comes to the payoff of the porn star Stormy Daniels of $130,000 in order to influence the 2020 campaign. So people uh, didn't know that he had this affair with Stormy Daniels. He has all these cases going on. He's been indicted. That certainly isn't going to help him. We all saw how just opening up an investigation into Hillary Clinton in the days leading up to the election hurt her campaign. And you're going to tell me the first ever indictment of the president since Ulysses S. Grant got indicted and, and put in jail for speeding while on a horse, which is true, by the way. He was let go, though. He's like paid $20. That's not going to negatively affect his campaign? I don't think so. I don't think so. And this case is going to be going on during the campaign. And the majority of Americans seem to agree from the polling data I've seen. And it's going to be a crazy 2024.